Alright class, in this video we're going to look at cell membranes and how it transports materials. On the picture on the left you have Garfield the cat. He says, I'm learning by osmosis. Leaving those textbooks on him, maybe sleeping under the textbooks will help him learn. Typically doesn't work on tests, but can't hurt to try. Alright, here's some functions of the cell membrane. Cell membranes are in all types of cells, prokaryote and eukaryote. Um, prokaryotes, remember, only have one cell membrane. They don't have internal membrane-bound organelles, but eukaryotes do. In terms of the different membranes, all of these will apply. Main functions are to protect the cell. Obviously, it needs to make sure that diseases and other organisms don't come in and out. It controls what comes in and outgoing substances. It's like a big door. So in your door, you're going to want to make sure that your food comes in. So here's your door, and let's say that there is some, as my baby likes to say, num-nums. We obviously want to make sure that that food comes in the door. And then as you eat those num-nums, there might be a disheveled apple there, full of broken down carbohydrates it's going to need to go out of the door. So it not only lets food in, it keeps bad things out, like garbage. It helps maintain ion concentrations of various substances. Um, typically, you're, you'll need sodium, potassium, calcium, and some other minerals to help control the amount of regulation in your body, and it helps maintain that in numbers. It's also selectively permeable. That allows some molecules in and others out. Essentially, you want to make sure that the food comes into the door and the garbage goes out. And the cell membrane is actually able to differentiate between the two. Here's the structure of a cell membrane. If you look at the cell membrane on top, you will have, say, air, and that's where molecules are outside the cell. Inside will be your water. It's actually called a phospholipid bilayer. Now, phospho has to do with the element phosphorus, just an element on the periodic table. Hopefully, you remember what the term lipid is. A lipid is another name for fat. And then bilayer, bi stands for two. So, when you look at the diagram over here, you have two different layers of a hydrophobic end. Phobia means that they're kind of scared of it. It doesn't like water. And then hydrophilic end. This end does like the water. If you look at the full cell membrane, most of it's the phospholipid bilayer, these little gray dots here. But it also has different types of proteins. Now you might remember proteins are used as building blocks for muscles and other cell parts. These proteins are important because they allow foods in and garbage out that normally won't fit through these internal phospholipid bilayers. Okay, next we're going to talk about how molecules will come in and out of a cell. You need to know about solutions. A solution is made of a solute and a solvent. Now a solvent is the liquid in which the solute is poured and dissolved. Water is the most common solvent. The way to remember solvent, if you're venting out, you're pretty angry about something. So venting is usually the bigger one, and it's almost always a liquid. The solute is a substance that gets dissolved or put into the solvent. Salt, in most cases, will do a lab with potatoes. Sucrose, if you put sugar in certain foods, are solutes. So how are some ways that, or methods that the cell membrane will be able to transport materials? One of the main ways is called diffusion. Diffusion is a type of passive transport. That's where molecules will move into and out of a cell with no energy expended. You also have what's called osmosis, just like the Garfield video. That's a type of passive transport of water across a membrane. Remember, water, osmosis, Diffusion is other types of particles like salt or sugars. You also have what's called facilitated diffusion that uses the proteins that I showed on the other side to carry molecules across. And you also have active transport. Now, active transport is the one type that needs energy 
in order to transport molecules. Energy is in the form of ATP, that's the energy molecule made in photosynthesis and respiration, and you can see those in some of my other YouTube videos. Okay, in diffusion, molecules will move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. The way to think about this is, let's say you take a Kool-Aid packet and you put a whole bunch of Kool-Aid in, in the cup, and then you start to add water on it. On the bottom, you'll typically have a lot of Kool-Aid, but as you mix it up, the big lump of Kool-Aid is going to mix in with the rest of the water and then make your Kool-Aid. So you start off a lot of Kool-Aid, and then it goes to a smaller amount of Kool-Aid, the water in that case. Here's a diagram of osmosis. Let's say in this area we don't have that many solutes or salt particles, but on this side we have many salt particles. The way to remember what's going to happen is you want to remember the term water waters down, in quotes. Now I'm not sure if you ever remember, or maybe you go to a fast food store, Whataburger and whatnot, you get the value meal and they give you that drink, and then suddenly the cup is half ice and just a little bit of soda. It is considered watered down. Kind of don't like that either, that's why I asked for no ice. When something's watered down, it's more dilute, it's not as strong anymore, right? So looking back at this diagram, we want to water down the solute. So, so far, we have a big amount of molecules on this side, and only a small amount of molecules on that side. So essentially the way the diffusion works is it wants to water it down and get to what's called equilibrium. Equilibrium is when you're going to have approximately the same amount of solute particles in the amount of water. In this case, you have only a few molecules of solute and a small amount of water. Here you have a few more molecules of solute, but you also have more water, and the amount of concentration is about equal. In terms of types of solutions you need to know, one is called a hypotonic solution. That's a solution that has a lower concentration of solute than another. So for instance, if I have a cell and then I have a small amount of particles on the inside and I have a lot of particles on the outside, a hypotonic solution has a lower amount of solute. In this case, the outside part right here would be hypotonic. A good way to remember this is think of a hippo. When he's drinking water, he's getting bigger because the water is lower amount of salt. You also have what's called a hypertonic solution. Hypertonic is essentially the exact opposite. You have a higher concentration of solute than another. Think about if you're very hyper, you're drinking a lot of coffee or something like that, you're going to have a lot of molecules in you. The last term is called isotonic. You might have heard of an isosceles triangle. In an isosceles triangle, you'll have two sides that are the same, and the third side might be different. In an isotonic solution, both your solute and solvent are in the same concentrations. All right, so now we're going to talk about the different types of solutions, the hyper, iso, and hypotonic solutions. In a hypertonic solution, you're going to have a bigger concentration of molecules on the outside of the cell compared to the inside. Remember the term water waters down? So in this case, it's going to water down the cell, and the water is going to go towards the greater concentration and water is going to leave the cell to try to make them equal. You also have an isotonic solution, and iso means the same. So in this case, we have the same amount of dots or solute inside and outside. In this case, it's not going to just stay stable, but we're going to have water coming in and coming out at equal rates. Finally, you have your hypotonic solution. Think of a hippo getting big. In this case, we have a lot of materials inside the cell and very few on the outside. Remember water waters it down so the water is going to go into the cell. 
All right, class, I hope that helped you understand the different types of solutions, diffusion and osmosis. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below or send me an email. I'm going to drink an isotonic solution of water with a little bit of lemon so I could keep the same amount of water inside my cells now.